Hey, and welcome to another episode of Wrench. On today's show, we're gonna work on these front Porsche 911 ST flares. I'm gonna show you why this one is perfect. That one's not so perfect. And hopefully we will fix them by the end of the show. Well, if you watched the last episode of the show, you would have seen these lovely rear ST flares go on. And now it's time to do the front. Here's the problem. Let me show you what a perfect flare looks like, which is this. See how that's lovely and it's like dipping in and it matches the bumper perfectly. It's got this nice little thing where it goes in that way. Now let's go over here. That ain't do that. This does not arc in like it's supposed to. In fact, it's sort of got this weird twist where it goes out that way. It's probably because I didn't assemble it right. I took 40 millimeters out of the middle of these flares and I probably just didn't assemble it right. And that's kind of the scoop. Now in retrospect, I wish I would have just tacked them together before I fully welded and finished. I didn't do that. However, I did just tack them on the front of the car right here. So I think what I'm gonna to try to do first is just cut these tacks out and see if I can maneuver the flare where I need it. If that doesn't work, then I'm gonna pop both of the fenders off and I'm gonna pop both the fenders off anyway because finishing them off the car is a lot easier. I can get on each side with a hammer and dolly and that kind of thing. But I'm gonna cut these, it's like 15 tacks that I've got here. I'm gonna see how much the flare flexes. And if I can get it to go where I need to, then we're good to go. I'm just gonna re-tack and recut, and all will be well in the world, then it's just gonna be finishing them up. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna to have to recut it in half in, in the middle and then kind of reposition it and do all that stuff that I was doing anyway. I may do that off the car, I don't know yet. So let's get to it. I'm gonna cut these tacks off, see how it goes. And uh, if it works, then we're golden. If not, we got a little bit of work to do. Well, my suspicions did come true. I'm gonna have to cut this front end off. So the thing I put together so well, I'm gonna have to redo. So I'm gonna pull the fender off and that way I'll be able to see the inside seam. I'll cut it right on the seam. Come back here, put it back on the car and see if I can position it where it's supposed to be. Okay, I think I've got this now. So you see how this thing dips in nicely where it didn't before? Now it matches this one, which also dips in quite nicely. And what I'm looking for here is the uh, arrangement between this sort of back area coming up this way. So I wanna make sure that it's got the same orientation on this side as it does on the other side. Now. The important parts of this here is that I secure the front end right there. And then I basically secure the flare together 
in a spot because I'm gonna have to make all of this rest of this stuff fit correctly and the bottom. So I need to get a little tack in here and I need to get a tack in here or even like in this little space right there. And that should ensure that it, it exists where it's supposed to. Then I can grind off and do all the important stuff I need to do. Uh, I've got a lot of filling to do here and I may have to use a coat hanger to do it, but I think we are going to work correctly once everything is sort of dialed in to where it's supposed to be. Now, if you are a motocross racer or rider, this probably looks like whatever body part you shattered and had to have pins put in, but it looks a lot better now. The profile of this flare is correct and it's close enough in all these spots that I can weld. This is going to be tricky, so I have a plan for this that I'm going to try to execute. And really what did it was that this area was just a little bit, it wasn't overlapped enough to be honest, it, it needed to be overlapped a bit more. So I'm gonna have to work this a little bit. You see how this is sort of curving down right here? So I'm gonna have to work this so it's nice and even, but that's all gonna be hammer and dolly. Same thing with this. I'm gonna make sure that this transition looks really good on the inside. You know, fortunately we have that option because it is, you know, something you can take off and you can work on. So I can put a straight edge basically so it goes straight from there all the way to there and make sure that it's dead nuts as the kids say. By the way, if this isn't the perfect illustration of everything's fixable when it's steel, I mean really, or uh, fiberglass, but even carbon fiber and aluminum, you can make an argument, um, everything's fixable. That's really the bottom line. I'm hoping to be able to fix this. I'm gonna tack this together right now where I can. Um, I've been sitting with it for a few minutes, looking at it from all these different angles, and I like where it is. So this is the part where this gets a little experimental. I have here in my hand a piece of TIG welding rod. Uh, the size is... Uh, what is this? ER7056? I don't know. It's steel welding rod. And I'm going to try to use it like kind of like a TIG welder where I'm filling the huge gap with this welding rod. I've seen some people use a coat hanger for this. I've never done this before. I have no idea if this will work. Not pretty, but I think it worked. I mean, when I say it's not pretty, it's not pretty. That one was better. I'll show you guys in a second what it looks like. Much better. I mean, okay, I think it works. Okay. All right, here is Frank and Flair. And I've got her tacked together and these big giant chunka chunka pieces which I might do a quick grind just to see how it looks, but it's pretty smooth. Uh, 
kind of, it's always hard to show this on camera, but it is smoother than it looks, by the way. Uh, I was looking at my editing from the other day and I go, oh, that's way smoother than it looks. But this is coming out really good. This needs a little bit of work here, but like these are the big old, these are the big old chunks of weld between, but that technique actually worked great. So I will continue to do it. So I think this front flare looks really good. To finish it off, I'm going to change venue. So I'm working here in the backyard. I got a big table set up and not only does this give me more working room, which is really necessary, I can get to the back side of each fender. And most importantly, I can take measurements really easily between the two and try to make them as symmetrical as possible. This part is by far the most time consuming, tedious part, which is they're tacked on, they look good, but I wanna make sure they look great. I wanna make sure that they're hammer and dollied and they look great even before I continue to weld them on. And this is where you just kind of stick on your audiobook and you just crank, you know, you just kind of zone out and it's cutting and grinding and cutting and grinding and cutting and grinding. First things first, here's the new flare. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's like a little V. It goes that way and that way right here. So I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is actually grind this on each side and hammer and dolly it so that this thing is not quite as V'd. So I'm gonna weld this part of the flare up now and there's obviously this really big gap. So what I've done is I've clamped a piece of copper underneath. What the copper does is it works as a heat sink and it allows the heat to spread out. Uh, it, nothing will weld to it. So I'll be able to tack this all together without uh, hopefully blowing through and make this thing all nice in one piece. So, so far this is just mega challenging to get on and get these gaps filled without burning through. But the, the magic here is in this phase, which is the, the tack phase and then the integration of the curve between the body and the flare. So what I'm doing here is every time I lay a row of tack welds down, I'm grinding it and then I'm using this dolly in the right spot to try to make sure that I'm getting a really nice blend between the existing fender and the flare. And that is just, you know, painstaking and it's, you know, grind, uh, grind hammer, grind hammer, grind hammer to get the right blend. So this has been super challenging. Uh, I'm still working on it. The transition here is better than it was. There's still a bit of a V that you can see right there with the reflection. Um, this whole seam is a bit of a nightmare. You know, I keep cracking and blowing through, which is a big pain in the ass. Uh, this is finally where it gets a little easier because it's just normal. This is the backside. This is my original. Uh, set up. What I'm going to do here is actually weld it on the inside because it's easier to grind this ridge than it is to try to get into the crevice. And I'm going to grind this thing off flat and then use a hammer and dolly to try to reduce this, that angle. See that angle right there? This angle from here to here is, is sharp right now, but with my round dolly, 
I will go over it from the inside and smooth this thing out. So I'm gonna run some welds all the way up along the inside of this seam, grind them, and then begin the process of smoothing this corner out before I get back into this nightmare of grinding and trying to make this thing work. So this has been super challenging uh, to try to make uh, it, it good and turn out well, but it's only metal. So my poor neighbors are having to deal with a lot of grinding and hammering today. Okay, here's where we are, and I'm really happy. So just for reference, here's the other flare, which hasn't been worked at all yet. You see that harsh angle? And this harsh angle in the back? See that? This one's gonna be so much easier than what I just did. Now, check this out. Now this thing needs a little bit more work. Another round of welding and grinding, but look how beautiful the blend is with the body now and how much uh how much flow there is you see that instead of having such an abrupt angle it's got this really nice smooth arc from one spot to the next will it need some filler of course so what i'm going to do now is i may just get to the other one but i think this needs one more round of welding like in these spots and i'm just going to hit these holes where i can and probably one more round of grinding. Uh, it needs a little bit more hammer dolly work right here in the middle, but otherwise it's like 90% of the way there. Well, this is super frustrating. Uh, I finished the rest of this. I did one more round of welding. It's, it's great, it's finished awesome. I cannot stop blowing holes through the center of this. It's just too thin. So I'm gonna have to cut this whole section out and weld in a patch where the metal is a little bit thicker. I'm gonna do the other flare first before I do that, just cause this is super frustrating. Well, to be honest, I didn't mean to do that, but I knew if I just went to bed like that and didn't grind it out that I would be bummed when I woke up the next morning. We are about 95% of the way there. I still need a bit of body work, but come on. We have sexy hips on the blasphemy build officially now. It looks awesome. They feel really good. This one needs one more weld and grind. It really doesn't. I probably could just grind it, but I do want to do a little bit of hammer and dolly work on this and, and uh, smooth this thing out a little bit. It's got a bit of a divot, so it's got to come off. Well, that was an incredible amount of work and something I'm super proud of. Um, this is a huge deal. I'm not sure if you guys realize this, but Getting this final flare on represents the last major piece of bodywork necessary on this car. If you remember at the very beginning, this car had no rear end whatsoever. 
It was completely empty for a quick release engine. It had no quarter panels, so I had to weld those on. I've deleted the drip rails, fixed the rust in the rocker panels, welded on the rear flares, welded on the front flares, completely rebuilt the front end of the chassis, channeled it for the radiators. Uh, it's been just an absolutely incredible amount of body work. And really, this would have needed to have been done whether it was a Subaru engine or a Porsche engine, I completely rebuilt the, the back end, you know, internally. This thing was just a shell. It was barely a shell when I got it. So this is a huge deal to get to this point. Uh, I have one more round of welding and grinding to do on this. And I got to fix the other one. I'm going to not bother you guys with that. Let's just assume that these front flares are pretty much done and uh, move on to the next project which is going to be plumbing the car um, i've got my buddy brendan from dime psi we've been working together for months you have not met him yet but you will and he does some really cool really incredible stuff but i'm whipped i've been working on this i don't know what time it is now maybe 9 30 10 o'clock um i started it's 10 o'clock i started work on this car today and really haven't taken a break uh at i think it was 12 30 p.m. So I've put a solid nine and a half hours into this uh, car and these flares, but they're done. They look ridiculous. The car looks so rad now with some, some hips on it. And now this really unlocks a lot of other stuff I can do, like measure for wheels and start thinking about suspension. And But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get this engine to go choo-choo and uh, go from there. As always, thank you guys so much for the support and for watching and for being part of this. I'm so glad I can bring you along for the ride. You guys rock. High five to everyone in the comments. High five if you're watching for the first time and uh, we'll see you next time.